The Colorado Rockies are magnificent, but nothing more spectacular than being right here in Beaver Creek, Colorado, just west of Denver. This is the World Pro Ski Tour, and I'm your host, Mark Sassy, alongside Olympian Pam Fletcher. And today our travels have brought us to the base of Bear Trap Trail in Beaver Creek for the first stop on a multi-stop tour around the United States. So Pam, let's talk about your amazing history here in Vail. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, I won a World Cup downhill just up the road in Vail, but today we are in Beaver Creek, and the racers are pumped for this steep Bear Trap race hill. The course is fast, the jumps are huge, and it's just a sweet 19 turns from start to finish. That's right, it takes about 20 seconds from the top to the bottom. So side by side, dual slalom ski action, two big jumps, serious prize money, and a big crowd here at Beaver Creek. Let's take a look at how the qualifying runs turned out from earlier today. You could not ask for a more perfect day here in Beaver Creek. Bluebird skies, no mention of wind, and temperatures in the mid-20s. Perfect for a day at the World Pro Ski Tour. Now this is head-to-head -head racing. Gates open at the same time, and from there, it's a drag race to the finish. The athletes love this format, and especially the payout. The dual format is so cool because you are you know, racing someone right next to you, which is unlike anything else in skiing. This isn't an easy race series, and the format makes it really fun. This tour is very lucrative. Uh, I think if you compared it to World Cup ski racing, the prize money difference uh, is massive. Thousands of dollars being decided by thousands of a second. I mean, this racers really have to start that cadence of the timing and get right on the money when those gates open. Hey, so Pam, what I'm wondering, when the racers are out of the start gate and on the course, where can things go wrong at that point? They are racing on slalom skis, which means they're really short. They're trying to juice these tails and get all the power out of the ski that they can. But it's fast. So sometimes they can get really locked up on the tail and it forces them into the back seat. And when right. you're back like this, it's so hard to get forward again and try and recover. Now, Pam, when the racers are on the course, what's going to be the fastest way for them to make up time? Well, one of the ways that you can do that is by cross blocking, where the racer actually puts their hands up in front of their face to block that gate right out of the way to try to get the skis as close to the turning pole as humanly possible. And then they still have to go over the jumps. Beaver Creek has one of the steepest, most challenging courses on the World Pro Ski Tour. These jumps are over five feet high and the racers fly over 20 feet or more down the slope. It's critical that the racer lands quickly. Ski racers generate more speed on snow than they do in the air. Here's what Michael Ankeny had to say about his approach on these jumps. Uh, we're coming in uh, with some speed and we're gonna fly pretty far. So you gotta make sure that you're right on point so that when you land, you can just get right back into the turn. If you're offline at all, um, you could fly right past the gate. 980 feet above us, the athletes are warming up and there are some new faces on the tour this year. Let's hear from rookie Garrett Driller. Dual racing is just really fun to do, competing head to head against another racer. So that's always been fun um, as an idea to do. And now that I'm here, it's been awesome. It met the expectations fully. Let's see how these rookies can handle this steep bear trap course. Here's the lineup for the round of 16. Now notice on the bracket, top qualifying first place, Phil Brown at the bottom of the bracket, second qualifying time, Garrett Driller, then right in the middle, Nolan Casper qualifying third, and Thomas Wilson qualifying fourth. And in theory, you wanna see the top four qualifiers make their way to the finals. So the top two qualifiers earn the advantage of getting a bye in the first round. Let's take a look at Phil Brown. Phil Brown is just charging on this course. Excellent cross block, hands right in the center. Now look, conventional technique right there where he actually goes around the gate. You'll see that all day where some of the athletes will go around the gate to get good timing and then again cross block to clear that gate right out of the way. Race is ready. Jack Shilby in the blue course, Robbie Kelly in the red course. Now Robbie Kelly comes out of the gate, takes over the lead early and holds on to the lead all the way through this round. Next up, Jay Baldessari on the blue and the veteran, Michael Ankeny on the red. Ankeny from the start, right out in front, all the way to the finish. Next up, we had the rookie Sam Richter in the blue course and Thomas Wilson in the red course. And you can see right from the start that Sam just wasn't happy with the way his skis were performing. Wilson went on to win this round. Red course ready. Yep. Come on, boys. Ready. Yep. Race is ready. 
You are looking at Nolan Casper, the tour champion from 2018, up against Taylor Schifrin. What a draw for Taylor. And that name is familiar, it's Michaela's brother. Nolan Casper made light work of this one. Then it was East versus West in the red course. Jake Jacobs from Glen Falls, New York, and Alex Lieber from right here in Beaver Creek, Colorado. Jake laid out of the gate, advantage Lieber. And then a very close race between two East Coasters, Kai Kohlberg and Tucker Marshall. But in the end, it was Tucker Marshall with the win. And finally, Garrett Driller in his opening round with a bye on his run. Amazing technique, really hustling down towards the finish line. He will advance into the quarterfinals. So the theory of the seating falling into place. Phil Brown, Garrett Driller advancing to the quarterfinals, but notice in the middle of the brackets, Nolan Casper and Alex Lever. This is going to be a great matchup. More from Beaver Creek, Colorado and the World Pro Ski Tour when we come back. Welcome back to Beaver Creek for the first stop of the World Pro Ski Tour. Here is the lineup for your round of eight. Qualifying first, Phil Brown taking on Robbie Kelly. At the bottom, Garrett Driller, second qualifier, taking on Tucker Marshall. And we mentioned right before the break, Casper and Lever. That's going to be a great matchup. But you don't want to miss out on one other good matchup, Ankeny and Wilson. Pam, this is going to be awesome. Here we go, Mark. This is the first run of the round of eight. Remember, they have to take two runs, one on each course. They will go down and come back up for their second run. All right, Phil Brown on the red course, Robbie Kelly on the blue course, and they're out. And right away, out of the gate. Boy, Robbie Kelly gets a little sideways, but he's really hustling, trying to keep it clean off the jump. That's right, and Robbie Kelly's no slouch. He is the former U.S. Giant Slalom champion. Nice technique getting down low in their tucks. This is a really tight race. Cross blocking by Phil Brown on the red course, but across the finish line, it's Robbie Kelly. Right here, Pam, the makings of an upset, but Robbie Kelly takes it with 29 one thousandths of a second. Back to the top, Michael Ankeny on the red course. Thomas Wilson with his tails locked and loaded on the blue course, and they're off. And right out of the gate, Wilson made a great position out of that start. Ankeny getting a little bit low in the line. Brutts are throwing him off a little bit, but Wilson is just right on point. And Wilson is a two-time All-American from Dartmouth College. Really hustling down here on the bottom. Very important. Whoa! Oh, hooked up on a Wilson. gate. Just made just one little mistake when turning a little too early. And that's all it takes. In a split second, he's out of the race. Take a look at this. Ankeny walking up to check on Wilson, and Wilson is OK. Um, I felt good across the flats. I knew I had a little bit of a lead on him. Thought I made it over the jump nice, and I just got a little compressed on that. And with this grippy, grippy aggressive Colorado snow, just shot me out. Went for a little whoop de doo into the net over there. Back up to the top. This is the heat we cherry picked for you earlier. Last year's overall tour champion, Nolan Casper, on the red course. And the hard charging local from the Vale area, Alex Lever, on the blue course. Both racers exploding out of the start, but Nolan down on his side and skiing miles more than Lever. He's really going to have to scramble to make up that time. Nolan earned over $25,000 as the overall champion last year on the tour. Well, he's going to have to hustle if he wants to earn some money today. Lever coming down through the bottom and wins it handily. Nolan Casper makes a huge mistake on the third gate on this course. He's sideways and then skiing outside the line in the powder, trying to get back into the course. And look at Lieber. He's already a gate ahead of him. Here we go for the last of the first runs in the round of eight on the red course. We have the seasoned veteran Tucker Marshall on the red course. Then we have the California native Garrett Driller on the blue course. Tucker Marshall gets the jump on Driller right out of the start. Driller now scrambling, trying to catch Marshall. Marshall hooks his arm, gets off balance over the jump, goes way wide, trying to stay back in the course. Driller still smooth, powerful, aggressive. Driller taking full advantage of these opportunities to gain some time on Marshall. And as he comes to the finish, he takes over that run. Back to the top for the second run of the quarterfinals. And we've got Robbie Kelly against Phil Brown. Phil Brown on the bottom of the screen. He's the number one qualifier going into this, and they're out of the game. And Mark, 29 thousandths of a second is nothing on a 20-second course. 
Both skiers charging hard on this run. Phil Brown touches down first over that first bump, and Robbie Kelly's got some work to do to try to catch up with him. Both skiers in their tuck, both skiers doing cross blocking, trying to get it down that course as fast as possible. It looks like Phil continues to hold onto the lead, and he takes the win. Phil Brown has secured himself a place in the semifinals. Will he be going up against Wilson or Ankeny? Ankeny on the blue course has the max advantage due to Wilson's crash in the first run. And Wilson has his work cut out for him, Mark. That is a huge deficit for him to have to make up. He's gonna have to be scrapping and striving at every level. Ankeny getting a little wild and crazy in the course. But there's Thomas Wilson. He's out in front, a little bit ahead of Ankeny at this point. But Ankeny is turning on the steam on the bottom. He's really coming on strong to the finish. So Ankeny wins both runs. He will advance to face Phil Brown in the first semifinal. Now Alex Lever, next up, completely surprised himself by beating out last year's tour champion, Nolan Casper, on the first run. Here's what he had to say before the second. Uh, it has to be a full out charge for sure. A tenth is nothing on this course, especially with all the rooms for mistakes. Both jumps um, are pretty tough. They've gotten pretty chattery as the days worn on. So uh, you really have to nail well, many different parts to come out victorious. Nolan Casper on the blue course closest to us. Can't believe he has to make a .75 over Alex Lieber in the red. Right out of the start gate, though, Lieber ahead. Got a great jump on Nolan. Nolan's going to have to really scrap and work hard to make up for that time deficit. But it is such a short course, and all these little mistakes here and there all the way down, they just keep adding up. And there goes Lieber down on the bottom, nice and smooth. He loves that Colorado snow. He knows the touch and the feel of it and takes it handily. Lever completes the upset with an outstanding achievement. Woo! He moves on to the second okay, semifinal. And Mark, what about our other story? The rookie, Garrett Driller, ahead of Tucker Marshall going into the next run. A little bit of struggle out of the start gate, so uh, we're working on that still. It's the hardest part of this uh, race series, I think. I can do the skiing part. I've been doing that my whole life, but those, uh, those starts are what's catching me, I think, so. Marshall gets a jump on Driller out of the start gate. Both racers, though, neck and neck right from the very get-go. It's going to be a tight race here. Oh, Driller's off the jump first, but they land simultaneously. This is such a close race right down through the bottom of the race course. And they're taking every chance they possibly can, just really trying to send it through the finish, and it's Marshall. But not by enough. Driller advances to face Alex Lieber in the second semifinal round. Stay tuned, we'll be right back with more from Beaver Creek and the World Pro Ski Tour. Welcome back to Beaver Creek for the semifinals of the Rocky Mountain Pro Challenge. I'm Mark Sassy alongside Olympian Pam Fletcher. Here is the lineup for the semifinals. Up first, Phil Brown of Canada taking on Michael Ankeny of the USA. Ankeny chasing that elusive first place finish Let's see what the athletes are thinking. Tactics going in, uh, just stay ahead of Phil, pretty much. No, you know, I, I kind of have a curse for getting third in these things, and Phil's, you know, very talented World Cup athlete. Not as talented as me, maybe, but uh, I think it's going to be a really fun race. He's been a good competitor last, last years on the Pro Tour, so I'm looking forward to taking, to taking him down. Back to the top for the first run of the first round of the semifinals on the red course. Phil Brown on the blue course, Michael Ankeny. Yep. Ankeny explodes out of the start of a Brown. Looked like Brown got hung up in the start game. He's going to have to really scramble to make up time on Ankeny. Ankeny throwing a lot of snow off that first bump, really slowing his speed down. Here comes Brown. He's really starting to charge down here on the bottom. Both of them look like they're neck and neck, but Brown, he swoos away and he takes it. Phil Brown takes it by 59 one hundredths. Michael, what happened? Yeah, I just need to clean it up a little bit coming off that first jump. Uh, I came a little wide off, over skied a little bit, um, but I was pretty happy with the rest of it. So if I keep that same approach, but just tightening up, tighten it up a little bit, for sure I'm going to beat him. So Ankeny's still optimistic for his chances. Next up, Alex Lever and Garrick Driller, college roommates. No holding back. <laughs> I like him a lot, but not that much. Yeah, he's my roommate back home, so yeah. you know maybe I might steal his keys if he beats me or something. Yeah. We can play some pranks. <laughs> well, if you want to start the car, you got to have the keys. And the key to winning here is getting a good first run. And the other key is getting a good start. Look at Lever. 
the jump on Driller right out of the start gate. Driller having to scramble, having to try to find time wherever he can. Lever, nice, solid, powerful on the edge, really trying to juice every turn for speed. Driller just can't seem to catch him. Lever to the line. And Lever leaves Driller behind, and he will take the advantage going into the second run. Back up to the top, second run for Phil and Michael. Phil Brown, .59 advantage over Michael Ankeny. Phil Brown closest to us, out of the gates they go. Ankeny is gonna have to make up some time. He's gonna have to really straighten out this course. Brown off the first jump over Ankeny. Ankeny's really trying to go straight, trying to turn it on, trying to get some more power out of those skis. Jumping in the tuck, Ankeny, coming off the last jump, Ankeny out in front, but throws him sideways, and Brown takes it. Big mistake for Michael Ankeny coming off the final jump. He touches down first over Phil Brown, but then boom, throws him sideways, trying to straighten it out too much, and Brown just squeaks in the win. So Phil Brown, the number one seed, has made it all the way to the finals. Who will he be facing? Will it be Garrett Driller, or will it be Alex Lieber? Alex Lieber has the advantage going into run number two. Driller out of the gate first. Lever's gonna have to make up some time. He knows it. He's trying to scrap it. He's getting a little bit wide, a little bit sloppy on the top. Driller down first off the first jump. Lever really trying to come on strong, but Driller is just turning the screws on Lever. Not leaving anything on the table here. He's putting it right down through the finish line. So it's Driller who overcomes the deficit, and the stage now is set for the finals. Phil Brown, Garrett Driller after the break. We are back for the finals of the Rocky Mountain Pro Challenge of the World Pro Ski Tour. Up first in the Constellation bracket is Michael Ankeny versus local Alex Lever. Alex is on the blue course and Michael is on the red course of the first of two runs. Lever right out of the start. You got the jump on Ankeny. Ankeny knows that he's going to have to make up time and he is going to try to run it a little straight. Getting sideways Ankeny and losing time. Lever way out in front. Just pushing nice and smooth. Ankeny's just trying to straighten it out wherever he can. Just getting a little bit sloppy. But Lever had the advantage coming out of the start gate and carried it all the way through the finish line. So now this is it. Heat number one of the big final. And every thousandth of a second counts in these final runs. Brown out of the gate ahead of Driller. Driller is going to have to work hard to make up time. Brown first off the first jump. Driller coming on strong, really trying to power through. Really turn it on the afterburners on these smooth turns down below. Even though there's a groove in the snow, Driller, look at him come on strong, pushing every turn. Driller reaches for the line, takes the heat. What a matchup. Yeah, I mean, we got a race, so at least, uh, I mean, we both ski well, and now we can compete one more run. Yeah, no, it's just uh, basically just a reach there. Like, we're super tight. It's going to be a fun one to watch, and we're both going to keep going for it as hard as we can, so. Now it's time for the second run of the consolation round to determine third and fourth place. The athletes switch courses, so for this run, it's Alex on the red course and Michael on the blue. And it's down to the end. Look at the shadows over the course, making the light a little bit difficult for these competitors. Ankeny knows he has to make up time, really trying to charge, trying to take risk wherever possible. But Lever, strong, steady, smooth, really tracking nicely in those turns. And over the jump, it's Lever out in front. Ankeny trying to make it up. Ankeny to the line. Not enough. The win goes to Lever for third place. So Ankeny does break his run of third place finishes, but unfortunately it's in the wrong direction. Ankeny finishes fourth today at Beaver Creek. Lever finishes third, but now it's time to go back to the top for the final run of the day here in Beaver Creek, Colorado. This is it, the final everybody. Thousands of dollars are on the line. It comes down to this. The rookie Garrett Driller on the red course, the Canadian ski team veteran Phil Brown on the blue. Full course ready. Yep. Race is ready. And it all comes down to this. Here's the run for the money. Garrett Driller a little bit behind Phil Brown. Phil Brown had the advantage coming in. Driller turning on the screws right now over Brown. Brown's got that cross block technique down. Driller nice and smooth off the final jump to the line. It's Driller. Oh man, Driller. Garrett Driller, what an amazing story. Brown wins the second run, but not by enough. Driller is our champion. And the rookie from Tahoe City, California is a rookie no more. And this young star from Tahoe City, California 
is our champion today here at Beaver Creek, and Pam is with him now. Phil, you were on top all day long, but boy, he, Garrett just got you at the end. Yeah, yeah, I think Garrett skied really well today. I, I was uh, I was pushing it, and I uh, just lost a little bit of speed on the flats, but that's uh, kind of the way it goes sometimes. And yeah, I'm a little bummed a second, but also it's a great day out here on the mountain. Looking forward to getting some Tito's. There you go, nothing wrong with second place either. Garrett, the rookie takes it here in Beaver Creek. Yeah, I'm ecstatic still, like unbelievable and wonderful event and uh, yeah, it was it was a push from the beginning and catching up to Phil on that last run, I, I saw him go out of the start gate right ahead of me and I was like, it was just a catch the whole way and I, I got him on the flats and that was where it was. Just well, close competitions all day long. Garrett Driller in first place and Phil Brown in second right here in Beaver Creek. Four very happy young faces at the finish line here at Beaver Creek, Colorado. It's been an extraordinary day of ski racing. We look so forward to seeing you all again shortly for our second stop on the World Pro Ski Tour from Waterville Valley, New Hampshire. Thank you all for joining us. From Pam Fletcher and our entire crew, I'm Mark Sassy, and this has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports.